Let's talk about the Kyle Hayes criminal case, the circuit court case down in Limerick. A couple of things. Firstly, yesterday, as you know, or as you, well, you're probably known, certainly if you're a GA person, you'll know it. Kyle Hayes is 25 years of age. He's from Limerick and he's won five All Irelands. With the Limerick senior hurling team, he's an absolutely superb hurler and he's a superb athlete. He's a big man as well, but he faced three charges, criminal charges, in the circuit court in Limerick, and he was acquitted of the charge of assault causing harm, but he was convicted of two counts of violent disorder. And some of the witness evidence and so on was desperate, insofar as it was pretty graphic, and apparently it was CCTV evidence. Firstly, as the trial went on, it was fairly clear that the evidence against Kyle Hayes was pretty strong. And when I say pretty strong, I'm referring in particular to the evidence of a girl or a young woman, a primary school teacher, who was in the nightclub and who gave evidence, direct evidence, on oath, about the conversation that Kyle Hayes had with her friend or friends, or at least he was nearby. But this young woman is a primary school teacher and had no particular reason to be giving false evidence. You'd have to say, and you'd have to conclude, that she was a pretty good witness to have for the prosecution. Then two Gardaí gave evidence to Gardaí that came across Kyle Hayes kicking the victim on the ground uh, outside the nightclub down the street or whatever and they gave evidence, graphic evidence about Kyle Hayes taking off and running off and eventually they caught up with them and so on and Hayes then gave an explanation that he was he was frightened because the guards were roaring at him but you're looking at another pretty good uh, uh, witness, two witnesses so now you've got two Gardaí given direct evidence, sworn evidence, on oath, and you have a primary school teacher. And then you have, apparently, CCTV footage showing Kyle Hayes kicking this fella, kicking the victim, and getting engaged in some sort of physical confrontation, some sort of fracas. But the bottom line is that at that stage, if you're watching the case closely at all, and even if you only had a passing sort of an interest in it, and just picking up the evidence on a daily basis from the newspapers, you would have concluded that, in all probability, the jury was going to find him guilty. And at that stage, it actually wasn't too late for Kyle Hayes to change his verdict, or change his, to change his plea. He didn't do that. But from my perspective, looking at it and listening to the evidence, I thought it was an absolute certainty that he was going to be found guilty. And he was acquitted on one of the charges, the assault causing harm, but he was convicted on two, the violent disorder ones. So, I couldn't understand, quite frankly, why he didn't change his plea in the light of the evidence, because the, the evidence was pretty compelling. Now, yesterday then, John Kiley came along, the All-Ireland hurling win, winning manager with, with uh, Limerick, and a man for whom I have a great degree of respect, and who's done a remarkable job with the Limerick hurling team and moulding those young young men into a real fighting, winning outfit, a professional outfit. But he gave evidence yesterday, testimonial evidence as it were, as to Kyle Hayes's good character and he was a good team player and he could trust Kyle Hayes and so on, which is all very well, but the unusual situation arose then where he was cross-examined, as it were, or questioned by counsel for the prosecution, because Kylie said 
in giving his testimonial that Kyle Hayes accepted he did wrong, he admitted he made a mistake and you know he sort of learnt his lesson but counsel for the prosecution said how can you possibly say that given that he pleaded not guilty to all counts he pleaded not guilty to all counts and fought the case over two weeks so that's not the actions of an accused person who accepts that he did wrong and recognises that and that's basically what his the prosecution counsel was saying to John. John Kiley confirmed that he had seen the CCTV footage and he had, uh, it looked, he, well he said it was very disappointing or it looked, it looked bad or whatever. But again, it was compelling evidence, the CCTV and even John Kiley uh, saw that or, or said that or accepted that. But the other thing is, and it was raised with Kiley, John Kiley told or gave evidence in the witness box testimonial evidence that Kyle Hayes had contacted him the next day to tell him about it. He contacted him within 24 hours to tell him about it and the counsel for the prosecution uh, lit on that and honed in on that because Kyle Hayes uh, had given evidence that he couldn't remember the incident, he couldn't remember anything. So John Kiley was saying that he told him within 24 hours. So that was a contradiction. Somebody asked me then on Twitter, would Kyle Hayes get the Probation Act? And I don't believe that the Probation Act is open to him at this stage. Why? Because he didn't plead guilty, he pleaded not guilty, and he fully contested the case over two weeks. So I think the ship has sailed in relation to the Probation Act. I think uh, myself that you're probably looking at a jail sentence. It may well be the case that the jail sentence could be suspended in its entirety. I don't know, that's a matter for the judge. But I would say that the judge has a difficult task. He has a difficult decision to make because no matter what decision he makes, if he goes easy on Kyle Hayes with the sentencing, he's going to be criticized. And if he goes hard on Kyle Hayes with the sentencing, he's going to be criticized. And one, notable or throwaway remark that the judge, maybe it wasn't a throwaway remark, the judge asked John Kiley yesterday about the number of hours that the hurlers trained or how many hours a week Kyle Hayes would be training for and John Kiley I think said 30 hours a week and the judge made the comment that perhaps with that much training and uh, that Kyle Hayes didn't have uh, socialization skills and didn't have the necessary socialization experience to deal with uh, situations, for example, that had arisen in the nightclub and had he the socialization skills that uh, he might have, then he may have just taken himself away from the nightclub scenario and the uh, dispute or the row rather than pursuing it further uh, down the street outside the place. Anyway, they are my comments on the Kyle Hayes case. It's a sad case for Kyle Hayes and it's a very sad case for the victim whose injuries were, looked pretty ghastly, looked pretty gruesome. I saw a photograph of the victim yesterday on Twitter or someplace and uh, shortly after the incident and he looked absolutely cat. So we're not talking about minor injuries. And one further thing, senior counsel for uh, Kyle Hayes put it to the judge yesterday that the injuries or the assault was at the lower end of the scale and the judge says I don't agree so that's critical because um, to you know trivialize or diminish uh, the injury etc uh, I don't think it was a great idea from his perspective and the judge obviously will have the final say anyway I hope you liked the video if you do give the thumbs up down below and you may be interested in subscribing to my youtube channel and if you're listening to this on my podcast, the Irish Law and Small Business Podcast, uh, I'd appreciate if you left a review. Thanks a lot.